Bismillah. We're back and you're watching Lifting the Fog, removing the misconceptions, misunderstandings, and misrepresentation about Islam and what it teaches. In the first part of the program, in our earlier segment, we discussed the way to respond whenever somebody comes to you with harsh attacks or questions against Islam. What we said was that it's important for us to first establish that we are willing to have a dialogue with them and set the tone in a nice way by letting them know that it's okay for them to ask us about our religion. The other thing we mentioned was that we should let them know that we're going to tell the truth to the best of our ability because that's in our religion and we don't want to go to hell. And in Islam, if you don't tell the truth, you're in a bad way. And then we came to an important part, which is the evidences of Islam. We have the proof behind what we say. It's just not a matter of me saying what I want to say, you say what you want to say, I can have a dream or you can have a mood change or, and you know, change the whole picture. Actually, in Islam, we have evidence to show exactly what the teachings are. It's well preserved for 1400 years. Now that we've said all of that, the next thing we talk about is that while they're listening to the answer, while we're presenting the response to what they've said to this attack, that if they find that some of the things that they said were not correct, and if they discover that some of these things in fact are really good and they like it, would they be prepared to reconsider their position? That's the way I like to use that term. Would you be prepared to reconsider your position? Meaning that, well, you're on something and I'm on something, but if you like what I've got better than yours, what are you going to do about it? Because if they will, then we're going to be asking them to consider worshipping Allah alone without any partners. There's a number of ways to bring that up, but you may be wondering, why would I be doing that when this guy's attacking Islam? Actually, it's strange but true that when people are in the most aggressive form to come at us, if Allah wants to guide them, they can just turn 180 degrees all the way around and become just as strong a proponent for Islam as they were one against Islam just a few minutes ago. This is historically true, and the evidence is preserved in the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu when in fact there was a person who came to attack Islam. He was with the enemies, and they were fighting in battle. There was a truce, and then this person came to meet the Prophet Sallallahu when he did, then the next thing he realized that, you know what? I like Islam. He began then doing what? He began to fight with, on the side of the Muslims, against the people that he was with that morning. And he wound up dying and becoming a shaheed or a martyr for Islam in the same afternoon. Now, I, of course, we're not going to talk in this kind of extreme, but at least you can see that this could happen. And it was Omar, radiallahu anhu who had come to actually kill Prophet Muhammad, <laughs> peace be upon him, and yet when he saw him, he just totally changed. And he's like, you know what? This is what I want for me. So that's why I'm using this as a technique in presenting Islam. If you discover you like something here, what are you going to be able to do about that? So then we give them the answer. Now let's come to this specifically, talk about that topic. Now their topic in this case is about violence. It's about... Kidnapping, it's about, uh, you know, killing people, suicide bombers, all of the types of things that they may bring up. And what would be our way to deal with this? How are we going to answer that? The word itself, and we just broke it down, Islam, listen to what we just told them. We told them Islam is about surrender to God, submission to His commandments and His terms, obedience, doing it after you say you're going to do it. And then doing it in sincerity, this means, of course, you'd do it even if nobody was watching. And finally, you do it all in peace. Now, did you hear any word here that indicates violence? No, it's the opposite. When you talk about salam, when you talk about taslim, and you're not talking about violence, you're talking about the opposite of it. So Islam does not contain, as a word, anything to do with violence. As a concept, nothing to do with violence. And certainly as a way of life for the Muslims, there is nothing about Islam dealing with terrorism and violence. These concepts, these ideas, are coming from something that's a very distorted picture of some realities. Now, if they said specifically, we saw in the Quran, 
It says here, kill these people, slaughter these people. Well, let's look and see what it really says. Because one of the things that I found, but remember, I used to be a preacher, or what they call in Arabic, kasis. I was a kasis for the Christians before coming to Islam. So nobody is going to be a stronger proponent for Christianity and an enemy to Islam than me. But yet, step by step, I began to learn. Now, wait a minute. I've been told this, but I'm seeing something different. I've heard that, but now I'm seeing a different picture here. It takes time. Nobody is going to just jump right into Islam without some kind of setup for it. It has to come from inside them. So don't push the people, but take your time and answer it. In the Quran, there is a very clear word used, qital. Qital is the word that is used that many people point to when they translate to English. It says, in some of the translations, slaughter the people or kill the people. So this is taken out of context. And when I say out of context, you'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. One of the things that people do, and it's not right, but it will help us in the long run, is they lie. Or they take things out of the context, change the verbiage in such a way to misrepresent. Uh, and again, that's why we have this program, Clearing the Fog. Watch this. I saw it in the internet. It says that Islam teaches violence and murder. And they misquoted an ayah from the Quran by saying, listen to this, that God is ordering Muslims, kill all of the Christians and Jews wherever you find them. There's no verse like this in the Quran. Look, go ahead, take your time, look it up for yourself and tell me, are you finding anything like that? And they say, yeah, we found it right here. It says this. And it's in Surah Baqarah. And it's in Surah Tawbah. And it's in Surah al -Mayyad. We found evidence of this with this word. What they found in the translation is translators trying to find a way to convey a message. And then they purposely did not put it in the context by reading all the verses. In fact, they purposely did something very bad, which is to misquote, take some of the words out and add words that are not there. To go a little bit further on this subject. Okay. Go to the Quran that you have. I know if you have it in English, you think it's Quran, but trust me, it's not. It's a translation, and it's never going to be as good as the Quran. But go to chapter 2 and look at verse 191. This is the verse that they're misquoting. When it says, And kill them wherever you find them, and turn them out from where they turned you out. Now, they're not going to tell you that part because they don't want you to see that this is referring to something in a verse before it. Obviously, there's something going on here turned you out from where? What are you talking about? What is this all about? And in reality, you have to go all the way back to verse 189 because look what's happening here in verse 189. Yasalunaka is the way it begins. They're asking you, this is what Allah, God Almighty, is saying to Muhammad, they're asking you, the people are asking you some questions. One, about the moons. They're asking about the moon when it comes in the months and so on. And Allah is telling him how to answer. Tell him that his moons are indications of the change of the month so you know about making hajj and you know about your fasting and you know about the various things that Islam is uh, you know, having the Islamic month or lunar calendar. And then it's, it's another question that people had asked about what door do we need to enter our house by? That's the next question that's coming up. And Allah tells the Prophet, peace be upon him, tell him to enter the doors by the front. Don't go in the back doors thinking it's more pious or righteous. That is not righteousness. And Allah tells him that righteousness is what? It's the right belief and the right kind of actions. It's what's in your heart, not what door you go in. And they're also asking Muhammad salam, about Hajj. How are we going to make Hajj when the people, that's a pilgrimage by the way, the people where we used to live, which this is Mecca and that's where you make the pilgrimage, how am I going to go there? 
and try to make Hajj when the people there have violated every treaty that we've had and they've killed us and they turned us out from our homes. They stole our possessions. Now you start to get the idea because they were never allowed to fight back. That was 13 years they couldn't fight back. Now comes the permission here in the Quran, not just permission, ordering them. Now you go and where you find these people, you can kill them in combat. Because Ketel is indicating combat, not a slaughtering, not a sneaking up behind people and doing violence to them. Go and fight them where they fight you. Turn them out from where they turned you out, meaning to go back and get your property back. But look what Allah says. But if they stop, then you stop. Don't be a transgressor, because verily Allah does not love the transgressors. If you understood what I just said, that makes a lot more sense now, doesn't it? Think about it. This is what we're saying. That somebody is purposely misrepresenting the Quran, taking verses out of context. When I've shown this to the Christians and the Jews, you know what they've always said to me? Oh my God, I've seen people do that with the Bible. The same thing in the Bible. They take what they want and leave something out and even added words. And I say, now you show me, where does it say Jews and Christians in here? Because it doesn't say that. Islam is not against Jews and Christians and never has been. I would love for them to sit with me and we can go over the Quran and look how many verses are saying good things about the Jews, saying good things about the Christians. There are those, yes, that Allah mentions in the Quran from Jews and Christians who are bad people. But there are people claiming to be Muslim that are bad too. And what's your point? So when they start to see this, Allah may soften their heart. And if He softens their heart, they might just wake up. Because I've seen it so many times, they say to me, Gee, I didn't know that. Gee, I like this for me. Hey, now guess what? That's what I'm going to say to them. Remember what you said in the beginning? Because if you found something nice in this, are you now prepared to consider worshiping your Lord alone without partners? Because that's what this is all about. And really this will lift the fog better than anything else. This used to fast is reminding you that it's only Allah that guides. We ask Him to guide us and them all and remove this fog.